The U.S. Navy is sending four warships to Iceland as part of a temporary expeditionary mission. The idea is to get more acquainted to the Arctic and prepare for ramping up the presence in the future. Viewers may note that last year USS Truman supercarrier and its support ships ventured into the region as part of NATO's Trident Juncture exercise. It marked a tactical shift as this was the first time a US Navy surface ship moved into the Arctic in 30 years. The four vessels in the latest mission are the Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser USS Normandy and Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers USS Lassen, USS Forrest Sherman, and USS Farragut. A helicopter maritime strike squadron will also be taking part in the mission. All these assets are part of the newly reactivated U.S. Second Fleet. The main objective of the U.S. Second Fleet is to counter Russian activity in the Arctic and North Atlantic. As per reports, the vessels sailed from their home in Mayport, Florida earlier this month and on arrival have joined together to form a surface action group SAG. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the Arctic could be the next major dispute like the South China Sea. Let's get started. One Xbet is the sponsor of this video. It's a global bookmaker company through which you can place bets on Barcelona, Liverpool, Chelsea and other football teams. They provide big winnings, quick payouts and this is the most reliable bookmaker. There are bets not only on sports but also on eSports. The process is simple. Sign up, make a deposit. Use my personal promo code DEFENSEU and get a bonus of up to $100 and play with my partner. There will be a Champions League soon. This is an excellent occasion to bet on a team that you are sure of victory. As the ice caps melt in the Arctic, it will become economically viable to navigate. Russia is gearing up to monetize the potentially lucrative Northern Sea Route NSR, as the Barents Sea and Arctic thaw faster than anticipated. Northern Sea Route could make connectivity between Europe and Asia 40% faster, cheaper, more fuel efficient and greener. Russia will lose land as the ice melts, but it may gain nearly 1.2 million square kilometers in its continental shelf which means it will have rights to extract undersea minerals and energy resources. Initially, Russian President Putin had dismissed climate change, but he's moved away from that line and signed the Paris Accord on climate change. Mr. Putin is now trying to use it as an advantage. He stated in this context, The issue, he said, is not stopping it because that's impossible. Since it could be tied to some global cycles on Earth or of planetary significance, the issue is to somehow adapt to it. Russia is building up its military presence in the region at a rapid pace to protect its interests. It now has seven bases along the shipping route, the latest being Northern Clover on Katelny Island, deep inside the Arctic. The Russian military is spending significant resources to ramp up its muscle in the Arctic and the naval activities in the region have increased many folds. Several military experts have advocated much greater American presence in the Arctic. The main reason is the growing Russian military activities in the region, which has the potential of significant economic interest in the future. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo at the Arctic Council in May this year signaled the U.S. intentions. His Arctic policy speech largely focused on the threats Russia posed to the region. He stated, Do we want the Arctic Ocean to transform into a new South China Sea? fraught with militarization and competing territorial claims. This latest military exercise indicates that the U.S. plans to play a much more active role in the region. Andrew Holland, Chief Operating Officer of the American Security Project, a U.S. security-focused think tank, explains, These deployments add force to the speech made by Secretary Pompeo in Finland earlier this year. It shows an American military increasingly waking up to the need to maintain a presence in the Arctic. It's long past time for this. U.S. Navy Rear Admiral David Titley, retired, stated in similar lines, These actions do give me some reason for cautious optimism that, whatever internal Navy and DoD dynamics are playing out, there must see some senior officials who understand that, like it or not, 
the Arctic is going to become an increasingly strategic waterway in the years and decades ahead. It seems the American military is waking up to the need to maintain a presence in the Arctic. Ticonderoga-class cruisers and Arleigh Burke-class destroyers are the backbone of the U.S. Navy, and hence it makes sense to send these to the region, keeping in mind the growing importance. USS Normandy is the only warship of Ticonderoga-class in the group, and it has an overall length of 567 feet or 173 meters and displacement of about 9,600 tons. It's designed as a multi-role warship. It has a speed of 32 plus knots or 60 plus kilometers per hour and a range of 6,000 nautical miles or 11,000 kilometers. USS Normandy is equipped with ANSPY 1 AB multifunction radar and a host of other sensors. It has 122 cell Mark IV vertical launch system that can be equipped with a choice of different weapons, like RIM 66M5. Standard SM-2MR Block 3B for air defense and anti-ship roll. RIM 156A SM-2ER Block 4 for anti-aircraft and anti-ship roll. RIM 161 SM-3 for ballistic missile defense. RIM 162A ESSM for anti-missile roll. RIM 174A Standard ERAM or SM-6 for anti-air warfare. Tomahawk for land attack and VL ASROC anti submarine missile for anti submarine roll. USS Normandy can also deploy two Mark 141 Harpoon missile launcher for anti ship roll. The ship is equipped with two Mark 46 triple torpedo tubes. Two MH 60R Seahawk Lamps III or Sikorsky SH 60B helicopters are also present for anti submarine warfare. Other than that, it's equipped with long-range naval gun for close-range offense. It also has Phalanx close-in weapon system for last-ditch missile defense. USS Lassen, USS Forrest Sherman, and USS Farragut, being Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers, have an overall length of 505 feet or 155 meters and displacement of about 8,900 tons. The class is designed as Multi-Mission Destroyer Capable of Anti-Aircraft Warfare AAW, Anti-Submarine Warfare ASW, and Anti-Surface Warfare ASUW. Arleigh Burke class has a speed of 30 plus knots that's 55 plus kilometers per hour and a range of 4,400 nautical miles or 8,100 kilometers. The warship of this class has 90 cell Mark 41 VLS which, like those in Ticonderoga class, can be used to deploy different types of weapons. The other weapons are also similar to Ticonderoga class. As per reports, the engines of these warships are powerful enough to navigate through up to 0.8 meters of ice. While their current hull design makes it suitable to pass through up to 0.3 meters of ice. The reinforcements in the hull, heating solutions and installation of de-icing system could improve the mission capability of these warships in the Arctic. In coming days, there is bound to be a major focus in the Arctic because of Northern Sea Route. Russia currently has the head start and seems to have a better understanding of future implications. The U.S. military has the advantage of much larger funding, which is approximately ten times that of the Russian military. The better funding should enable the American military to strengthen itself quickly in the region. This will be an interesting tussle. It's to be noted here that the U.S. and Russia are already much closer to a skirmish after the nullification of the INF Treaty. The INF Treaty eliminated around 2,700 nuclear and conventional missiles as well as their launchers. This was achieved in May 1991. This included short-range missiles with 310 to 620 miles, that's 5,000 to 1,000 kilometer range, and intermediate-range missiles with 620 to 3,420 miles, that's 1,000 to 5,500 kilometer range. The United States abandoned conformity to the INF Treaty as of the 2nd of August 2019 as it accused Russia of non-compliance and recently tested a cruise missile that would have been illegal under the treaty. It remains to be seen how things pan out in coming days.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.